Good. Next and last import address table sort of thing we're going to talk about today. Delay loaded DLLs. This is much more like what you're going to see on Linux later. I'm going to show you a picture for Windows, which is going to be the exact same picture for Linux. This is not the default on Windows. The normal imports is the default. But delay load imports is basically just saying, I don't even want you, OS loader, don't even bother loading DLL, foo.dll. Don't even bother loading that into memory until I call a function in foo.dll. So it's lazy loading, lazy linking. Basically, when I call that function, now I want you to go out and get that thing off disk and call it. Because you can think of some cases where, you know, maybe it's very expensive to, maybe you've got like a giant thing that takes up a ton of memory and you only call it like once in some really corner case, that kind of thing. And so why even bother wasting your memory by loading up a DLL unless you happen to hit that corner case and you call that particular function. So delay load DLL says I'm only going to import it when I need it. So that would be set in the uh, Visual Studio in the, let's see, input options for linker. You specify which DLLs you want it to hold off on importing until you call. And then you, know, you say whether or not you support it unloading afterwards. Can, can any DLL be delay loaded? That's a good question. I mean, technically, I think that you could mark any DLL as delay loaded. But I feel like, well, first of all, I feel like, you know, if we do kernel 30, I, the real question is. I think one, I'm just wondering, do you have to compile the DLL to say I'm delay loadable? Yeah, so, no. Or? So there need, need be no compatibility with the thing that you're marking as delay loaded. So it's completely independent. You can just say, well, I don't want to import that guy until later. But has, the other DLL has to know nothing about it. Does it do some kind of checking right at the beginning, though, to make sure that it's actually there, or do you get an error? When you try and call that function, I believe it does on. do a little bit of an optimization where it will check basically. Well, let me think. No, I don't think so. Because like, like Microsoft Word, if you like load the equation editor and it's not, you didn't install it, you'll get an error at runtime. Yeah, I, it depends on what you mean by does it do a check. Certainly, it won't do a check like at the time the thing is loaded up into memory. But I was thinking more in the context of like if I have function one from that DLL and I have function two, and you call function one and then it gets loaded up, and then you call function two, I'm trying to think of whether it resolves all of these. No, I know it doesn't resolve all of them. And therefore, there, see, it's basically a two-stage process. There's, for delay load imports, each of them is treated independently. So basically it's two-stage. When you call function one, it basically jumps to some stub code. The stub code loads the DLL, and then it does a lookup for the function one's address. When you call function two, the stub code will look and see is the DLL already loaded, and if so, then it won't load in the DLL, and then it will still do the same process of looking up function two's address. So in that sense, there is a check beforehand, but not in the sense he was talking about, like, if you load up the executable and that DLL does not even exist, there's no check like that. It will just happen at runtime when you try to call the function if the DLL isn't there. It, uh, it'll just crash. Is that for trying to like save initial memory? It's for saving initial memory. It's for potentially saving initial uh, runtime, right? I mean, it's not a lot, but uh, you know, it takes time for the OS loader to run down the list of all your different functions and like uh, resolve them by checking them through the export thing. So I guess I would see it. For, from that sense, I would see it as like, let's say you have some small application that like starts up and shuts down frequently, right? And if you know that like this, this application, <laughs> let's say that control panel that we were talking about before, the control panel starts up and it's being called and like one particular function is being called. If that particular function, uh, it requires DLL A, so function one requires DLL A and function two requires DLL B. If you're calling a control panel with some particular function and that's going to do some particular thing, Let's say there's like, you know, 50 different functions, and let's say that they have 50 different DLLs. You wouldn't want to like load the thing up, load 50 DLLs, do 50 import resolutions, call one function, and then quit it down, right? You would call it up, and then it would just load just the necessary stuff, and then shut it down. So is that atomic to the programmer, or is that? What do you mean by atomic? Do they have, is there any concern with the programmer they have to worry about that kind of management? or? No, so this is all basically behind the scenes. As far as the programmer is concerned, all he has to do is say, like, look, I don't want to bother with loading a DLL, this DLL, 
unless I end up using it. Now the programmer will know that he imports from that DLL because you know he went and looked up open open process or something like that, and he'll go on the MSDM page and says open process uses kernel 32.dll. They can say I know I only call open process in really rare cases, so maybe I want to label it that. The reality is that kernel 32 is one of these special DLLs that get quoted almost all the time. But Good questions. Any other questions? <clears throat> All right, good. So I think we got the concept of delay load. It's like just don't even bother loading it until just in time. All right, back to the data directory. Looks like index 14, so it said, no, 13, said that IAT was 12. This must be 13. Delay load import, again, just like everything else, it's a virtual address and a size in the data directory. And what that virtual address is going to be pointing you at, that RVA is going to be pointing at you at, is yet another something something you know, something something import descriptor, right? So we had originally we had I don't even remember the name. So we've had bound import descriptors, we've had normal import descriptors, and now we've got delay load import descriptors. So the things we're going to care about in this is that we've again got a name, so we're talking one of these data structures per DLL that we're delay loading from. And now, at least this time, it has nice, clear names, not original first thunk and first thunk, right? That thing points at the delay load import address to. That thing points at the delay load import names to. These are actually separate, again, well, so whereas the bound import was reusing and pre-filling in the normal import address table, this is actually going to have its own data structures, its own import address table, and own import names table off to the side, completely separate from the normal import address table. <clears throat> yeah, and so in the original, like, uh, Errol Carrera slide, he calls this image delay import descriptor, but there's no such thing defined in winnt.h, so the, the only thing I've seen defined is delay imp.h, and it has this particular data structure. So we're just going to call it uh, delay load import descriptor anyways. But all right, so let me see if I can picture like that. Oh, yeah. okay. So this is what I just said. We care about the RVA IAT. So it's going to point at a separate IAT. Again, like the previous IAT, it's just going to be uh, function pointers. But the interesting thing here is unlike, yeah, I guess this is why I don't have a picture. Unlike the original one that I showed you where import names table and import address table are pointing at the same sort of hint names kind of data structure. Here, the import names table is going to point at the hint names, just like regular. These delay load entries are going to be pre-filled in with pointers to code inside of the binary itself. And this is stub code that I was kind of talking about before. Stub code which says, when you call this function, I'm going to load the DLL and I'm going to look up the address of the function in that DLL. So this works the same way in Linux and Windows. Whenever you do delay loading like this, you've got to have some stub code where you call printf, but instead of actually calling printf, it calls to some little snippet of code that says, oh, someone called printf. I need to do, you know, load up the libc and then I need to look up the printf and then I'm going to fill that back into the table. So that's just in time sort of linking, dynamic linking. All right, so we got a little picture like that for that. I believe this is from MS Paint, and I will show you this with the debugger, too, in a little bit. So from MS Paint, this is my old slide, 32-bit system. But MS Paint is running along in its normal code, and it hits this call to the, import, the delay load import address table that happens to correspond to draw theme background. So it's going to pull a value out of this delay load import address table at 10.3e6c4. So down here at the delay load import address table, we've got 10.3e6.4. It's filled in with a particular value. So this is not pointing at the name in structure. It's pointing at the address of stub code. So this has 10.35.425. So we pull out 10.35.425, and so this call pulls that value out of that entry and jumps there, right there, all right? So this call jumps to here, basically, all right? This stub code 
takes and moves some offset in MS Paint, some data value basically, it turns out to be this exact data value. So 10.3e6c4 happens to be the place that it got this thing out of. It's going to take this address and put it into the EAX register. So it's basically just getting a copy of the address wherever this thing is, because later on it's going to fill that in with something different. So it's just saying this jumps to code, which gets its own address and puts it into a holder register. And then it just goes ahead and jumps to a particular location. And this location will be reused amongst all these stub code entries. And this location, all it does is load the DLL and try to find draw theme background. So we jumped to this stub code. It loaded uxtheme.dll, which happens to be the location where draw theme background is. And so then it does a sort of lookup on what's the offset, what's the absolute virtual address of draw theme background inside of uxtheme.dll. And so it finds this and it wants to fill that into this table so that the next time someone's running along and calling this, they get that address instead of this address. Right? So first time through, you get stub code. Second time through, you want to get the real address of the real function. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, there we go. Look at that animation. Awesome. That should be starting way up there. OK, I guess actually that's right. This DLL loading function resolution code found that address up here, and then it overwrote it into the N3E6C4. Right? So there's a reason we got this 10.3e634 put into this EAX here. It's just because we needed to tell this code right here where to fill in the value when it eventually did the lookup. So it's going to work in the exact same way in Linux later on. All right, so once this stub code has filled in the value, then it goes ahead and just calls the function because the original program was really just trying to call draw theme, right? So it just goes ahead and calls draw theme, and then once that's done, it's going to return back to, well, I don't really show it. There should be kind of, you call draw theme, and when it's done, it returns back to after the call, and then you continue on. You continue on, and you eventually hit another draw theme, and so the next time you hit a draw theme, you're going to go direct. You don't have to touch the stub code at all. And so basically, you can expect for every entry in the delay load import address table, there's going to be one of these little stub things that just takes that entry's address and moves it into some register and then just calls directly to the same code. So just move this into register, call that. Down here, move this into register, call that. So it's just a circuitous way of going around and calling the original function and filling in just in time the delay load import address table. All right. Any questions on that conceptually? I'll show you the literal things here in a second. But everyone get this notion of wait, call stub code, let the stub code fix up this import address table, and then every other time we call to the original thing? Yes? So after the first time I call that and it gets the address in the UX theme DLL, yep. um, does that stay? Yep. Cached or whatever. It stays or there in this reference. table to the rest of the run of the program. Yep. So it's basically because the call just pulls the value out of th this address, this address now afterwards is always holding this address. So it's pulling this out every time a new call to that from that address happens. So yeah. It's you fill it in once and then it remains for the remainder of the run. When the program closes and reopens again, Based on the file data, the file data is still going to be pointing at the stub. So the data in file always points at the stub. And then if the stub ever gets called, when it's run time, you'll get this filled in. And I'll show that with the debugger, basically. I'll show that I run <coughs> MS Paint, and you'll see some delay load entries got filled in already. Some of them didn't. Some of them still have the same thing as on file. And then I'll like go and move my mouse around, and that causes some new function to get called. And then you'll see, hey, look, some other delay load import address table entry just got filled in. So yeah, it's going to be per run, basically. It gets filled in, and you close it down, restart it, it has to start all over. Any other questions? Yes. I guess I don't get where the 
address or placement occurs in this. So, so you basically, the line where you call. Right. So we're, we're right now. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of missing some arrows. I felt like there should be more. Like so back down at the stub code. So we, yeah. we're starting up here. This guy calls to actually pulls whatever's in this thing out and calls to that address. So this points here. So this calls to right here. Right? So we get this address and we put it into the AX. Then we just jump to here. And now here I'm just like sort of hand waving around all of this DLL running. But the reality of this is that there's some code in here that goes and looks up. There's going to be, you know, this is the delay of the import address table. I'm not even showing the import names table, right? The import names table will be what's showing me that draw theme background is up in UX theme dot DLL. Okay. So somewhere in this hand wavy code, it's going to be looking up the import names table. It's going to be calling, you know, load library to load up UX theme. And it's going to be calling get proc address to get the address of draw theme background. So it loads the library, and then somewhere in here, after it loads the library, it looks up the address, and then it fills in the address, and then it calls to the original. By looking at what EX holds. Yes, it just fills it fills in whatever it found the address of, wherever EAX happened to be pointing at in this page right there. All right, so let's look at this more literally. Okay, so the data directory will have had some RBA that pointed at uh, delay load before things. Uh, I'll show it for you. Let's see. Oh, there this works. Yeah. MS Paint is 64. I don't know, we'll see if I have a 32-bit MSP on here. 